The NFT landscape is rapidly evolving. They can represent anything from digital arts to music to in-game items. This also makes them very ideal for the applications where the security and the authenticity are very important, especially in the art world or the in-game industry. The NFT market has grown exponentially in recent years. In 2021, the total value of NFT sales exceeds 40 billion. This growth is being driven by a number of factors, such as the increasing popularity in digital arts, the rising of the gaming industry, and the growth interest in DeFi. As the NFT market continues to grow, so there is a need for more scalable and efficiency in blockchain infrastructure. Our network is a Cosmos blockchain that's being designed for the ideal platform for NFT. Our network is committed to making the NFT more accessible to the masses. We believe that everyone should be able to enjoy the benefits of NFT, regardless of the technical expertise. We are working to develop the user-friendly tools and their interfaces that will make it easy for anyone to trade, buy, sell, and create NFTs. Hello everyone, welcome back to Koi 6 j and this is Jenny, your host today. Um, this is a very special guest right next to me. I'm very honored to invite him to join us for the series of Koi 6 j exclusive, where we will explore the story and find out some like interesting facts about the guest and also the project that they worked in. So this is YK from our network. Please welcome. Uh... Thank you everyone for having me. It's an honor for me too. Uh, I just wrapped up my uh, 2.5 years at Hashed as an investor and I am departing to an exciting journey back to the Builder role as uh, the Chief PD Officer at Aura Network. So I'll be happy to share my stories and I'm excited for the questions to come. Uh, let me call you just YK, right? Yeah, just YK, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. My, uh, my Korean name is Youngjun. Oh, yeah, but it's a, a little difficult to pronounce, so I just go by the acronyms. So okay, YK just is YK. just fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, me too. Like, for example, my Vietnamese name is Nguyen Ngoc Sơn Quân. Ah. So that's pretty long, <laughs> and it's pretty hard for people to pronounce, so just call me Jenny. Yeah, Jenny is much easier. Yeah. Jenny is definitely <laughs> cool, much easier. Cool. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. Welcome. Hmm. So, um, how long have you joined crypto? So, I started my crypto journey back in 2018. Mm -hmm. So, I, I was a retail investor back in 2017. But after, uh, after the crash happened, I, uh, and coincidentally, I was actually studying pro self learning programming back then. And when the crash happened, I really wanted to explore whether I should keep my bullishness in the industry or just leave, leave, uh, I just leave and never come back. So when I made a deep dive into crypto, when I like read the white papers for Bitcoin and, and, uh, and for Ethereum, and when I really researched into how crypto was made up of, the tech stack behind uh, crypto, I was instantly uh, immersed into the potential of crypto. Uh, so just curious, can you share some experience or like some memorable memories when you're working at Hashed as a investment role? Uh, there, there are so many. <laughs> so, <laughs> so again, I mean, uh, I was it was truly a pleasure for me to uh, to have been with Hash for such a long time because it's uh, seriously like one of the most distinguished talents that I've met. So to pick a few interesting experiences, uh, I think those are the most memorable memories. And mm -hmm. I guess one of them will be uh, the NFT NIC back in 2021, because it was one of the first events after COVID. So yeah, a lot of the crypto events were closed in COVID. And NFT NIC back in 2021 was the first one to like restart. And meeting all my friends who I haven't met for a few years there, and also coming together with the US teams. Uh, uh, some of our partners and associates were based in the US, and for the first time was a very memorable uh, moment for me. And yeah, there are definitely good memories. You met a lot of people, mm. you're talking with a lot of great partners projects. What would be the most bullish sector that uh, you would think? This is not a financial advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a very personal opinion. But uh, I, I'm not sure if this will directly answer your question, but uh, like even at Hash, I, I focus on areas that uh, increased developer experience mm -hmm. because uh, I thought that the, the core missing piece in crypto is uh, the bad user experience. And I think bad user experience comes from bad developer experience. So because developers have a lack of flexibility when they're building products, 
uh, that kind of inconvenience gets translated into a bad user experience. So that was my perspective. And I thought that in order to have more, uh, like in order to have dApps that are capable of mass adoption, like good user experience and relevant services, I thought that building a good developer experience was very important. So that's why I focused on layer one and infrastructure uh, investments while I hashed. But can I ask more about what you said about the developer's uh, experience and the user experience? Mm -hmm. So for me, the user experience is a little bit different compared to mm -hmm. each country, right? Mm -hmm. For example, in Korea, um, I haven't been to Korea before, but I guess there'll be a different, like people more familiar with, um, for example, Kakao more than in Vietnam, mm -hmm. we use uh, iMessage from Facebook as a main um, mm. texting app, um, so mm. or Zello. Mm. So the user experience in each country is a little bit different. So, what do you think about that when you? Mm. Mm. That's, a, that's an interesting question. So when it comes to user experience, I definitely agree that different regions have different user experiences. So if you look at uh, Western finance apps, they're very simple. But when you go to Korea and many of the Asian markets, I think Vietnam will be similar. There are a lot of these super apps. So mm -hmm. a lot of apps that have a lot of features that are rich in features and also has like cross discipline. Like WeChat. That yeah, WeChat, exactly. And Kakao wants to be like that too. They want to be like a super app that has everything that you need for to live in uh, Korea. As we expand, I think those kind of uh, localizations will be very important for the user experience that is relevant to certain regions. Mm. Is that one of the reasons that you want to explore more culture um, that you decided to switching from what you're based, where you base is Korea and to Vietnam? Because now, uh, congratulations for the new journey with our network. So can you tell a little bit more for the audience who haven't known or heard about our network before? So just a very short mm, brief about it. Sure. Uh, I hope everybody knows FPT, right? I guess mm, FPT is a FPT's big corporation. Big, giant tech company. Yeah, in Vietnam, yeah, right? So uh, Aura was uh, accelerated slash incubated by, uh, by FPT. So basically the whole, like many of, most of the team were part of FPT. And then when they started their uh, web three businesses, they had a separate team there, and that team later spun out as uh, as Aura. And Aura is uh, is building great infrastructure for the Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, they have built the, in my opinion, the best indexer indexing uh, stack and the best uh, wallet infra, so app account abstractions right now. And they have been building these a uh, great infrastructure that, in my opinion, really enhances developer experience. So I think Aura is in a great position to really enhance the developer experience and later on make uh, host dApps that are capable of mass adoption. So not only just in Vietnam, but once we have a great Vietnamese audience, I'm sure that we can leverage that to go to other, other regions as well. So yeah, I mean, it's a, Aura is a very well thriving uh, startup in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So in short, uh, what do you think that people will be the most bullish mm -hmm. about R in the future? What will be the upcoming plans? Um, maybe in terms of partnerships. Uh, sorry, I forgot to mention about the title of YK here. Um, he's a CBDO of R Network. So he's in charge of like BD, uh, BD development side and also the partnerships. So not only in terms of the maybe upcoming news about the partnerships, but also about the potential projects launching and building on our network, mm. what would be the most exciting news that people can expect it? Uh, so there are pretty uh, sensitive NDA issues. I know. With many of the, <laughs> like, just a little bit. I, so uh, to give a brief, I, I guess uh, the extent I can say it is since uh, Aura is so well connected with FPT, and since the Vietnamese market itself is very attractive for non-crypto businesses, uh, we've had had uh, very interesting discussions with very old Japanese IP holders because they want a way to penetrate into the Vietnamese market, and Aura can obviously uh, coordinate a lot of those efforts while also supporting their metaverse slash NFT efforts as well. So. I'm pretty sure that there will be pretty uh, exciting news coming from that. And also, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Aura, although right now we're focusing on NFTs, it is pretty evident that the infrastructure that we have been building is not just for NFT relevant dApps, but for dApps that can actually have mass adoption. So I think uh, it will be able to host more complex, more, uh, more user-friendly apps in the future. So we're also thinking about rebranding 
not just on NFTs, but also to general dApps and general ecosystem uh, building. So that will be that will also be a very interesting uh, update on the roadmap. Awesome. Ara also have Sick Hive. It's uh, very focusing on NFT. Mm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So um, how about expanding? Uh, it's Ara gonna like expanding the team very mm -hmm. soon because I know that some of the audience who is watching also looking for maybe explore an opportunity to working at a web free company, mm -hmm. uh, for example, and obviously our network is a great environment for that. Um, do you have any plan expanding the team or recruiting um, members? Oh yeah, if you're always searching for good talent, uh, we obviously have a lot of initiatives that will be starting from this year and uh, there are a lot of exciting updates to come. So we're definitely looking for all kind of talent. So if you're interested, please let us know. Awesome. So maybe let the, um, the uh, email link of uh, HR sure, and sure, description sure. Yeah, below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, by the way, um, I think our video is a little bit long, so maybe my last question for YK before we end it. Mm. Very quick question. Mm -hmm. Describe three words about the work environment in Aura. Very quick. Okay, so scalable and flexible and enjoyable. That's awesome. Mm. Okay, so thank you so much YK for joining us today. It was a very great opportunity talking with you to know more about you as a person and also about our network. And I really hope that um, everyone, you have a great time enjoying this video and thank you so much for watching. Uh, do you want to say goodbye to the audience? Oh, yes. Uh, sorry, I, I'm learning my Vietnamese now, so maybe next time I can speak more fluent Vietnamese. But anyways, thank you so much for having me and thank you Jenny and uh, Plain60 for having me too. So yeah, uh, I'll be uh, sharing a lot of more exciting news about Aura, so please, uh, please, have, please uh, keep us I'll keep you posted on a lot of the interesting updates. So. Awesome. Thank you so much for you guys for watching and for your support. See ya.